What's up, nerds? So how do you land a spot in a cutting edge research project with absolutely zero experience? Whether you're in high school, college, or even graduate school, I wanna show you how I went from knowing absolutely nothing to doing research with NASA JPL and top universities. And I promise you don't need a 4.0, it's way easier than you think. If you're new here, my name is Dara Tringali. I'm 22 years old and currently a physics PhD student at the University of Colorado Boulder. And for years now, I've been doing research with projects ranging from theoretical physics to novel circuit design in both academia and industry. But also like all of you, I started with absolutely no relevant experience. So what I wanna give you is a simple three-step process you can take to get yourself involved in research. Step one is identifying what professors that you wanna work with. We're gonna start with the easiest path, even though this is gonna be applicable to anybody in just a few minutes, and that's that you go to an R1 school, and there's already plenty of research opportunities available all around you. You're gonna to wanna to find the departments that you want to do research in, that does not have to be the same as your major, and then you're gonna find the list of faculty for that department. Click through each faculty member, go to their research page, and just read about kind of what the research interests are and look for specifically for a research website link. Then you're gonna click on that, find the research lab, and then you're gonna to wanna to read through kind of what they do. So here's an example of what you can do. I've navigated to the homepage of the physics department at my school, CU Boulder, and we wanna go find the people page here. So this will give us a list of all the faculty. If I scroll down, I wanna kinda of look through this list and click through each professor, identifying which are the research faculty. Let's go, for example, here. And you can see kind of a summary of the research interests, and you're going to look for this very handy button here called the lab website. That's the important one. When I click on that, I can now see their actual research group, and I can see kind of what research projects they're currently working on. I can scroll through here, read this, and see if this interests me. If it does, then I maybe want to make note of this and want to reach out to the professor at a later point. You want to rinse and repeat this process over and over again with all the faculty until you have identified all the professors that you want to work with. Try to rank them and make note of the top three in your list. Now, if your college or university doesn't really have much research, that's fine. If you don't even know who to contact, then try starting with the department heads and reach out to them and see if there's any kind of way that you can get involved. If you strike out or nothing interests you, then it's time to start looking for nearby universities. And if you're in high school, this is the time to start tuning in. Even though you don't go to a specific university does not mean that you can't do research there. And fun fact, that university doesn't even have to be close to you at all. So find a university that you want and do the same thing as before. Go track down the faculty pages and go see if you can find any professors. Let's look for professors again at a different school that I currently don't go to and see if we can find someone we want to work with again. I actually did research with this guy here, but that's a side note. But same thing applies at another school. People, faculty, list of all the faculty. I can find the professors that maybe would interest me. Click on them, go to the research website. And once again, you can see that they have a summary right here and I can read about the research projects. And if they interest me, then I can make note that maybe I want to contact them just as before. My last recommendation on that would be that if you're going to reach out to professors that are at a university really far away, look for projects that are more theoretical or computational rather than super experimental work. Because if you have to do something that requires you to be in a lab for 10 hours a day, then if you live 100 miles away, that's going to make it kind of difficult, isn't it? Once you finally identified the professors that you're interested in reaching out to, we finally reached step two, which is reaching out. You're gonna to wanna to draft a short but informative email selling your case to the professors on why you wanna work with them. To give you an example of what you can do, I'm even gonna show you the very first email that I ever sent for research. And here it is. I said, dear Mr. Dr. Professor, my name is Dara Tringali. I'm currently a sophomore at UB majoring in engineering physics. Currently, I am the president of UB SEDS, leading a team researching and designing PCBs for a competition rocket. Due to this, I developed an interest in pursuing more formal research and am interested in learning quantum information science. I enjoyed reading some of your work in these areas and greatly appreciate the chance to meet with you regarding the same and possibly an undergraduate research opportunity in your lab this summer and or the fall. I've attached my resume and unofficial transcript to this email. Please let me know if there's any other information that I can provide. Signed, me. The main things to show here is that what I did is I introduced myself and I explained why I'm interested in doing research. You'll also notice that my resume is attached. So a prerequisite of this is yes, you have to have a resume. You don't have to attach your transcript like I did. And this isn't a video about resumes, but I will give you one quick tip. Don't make your resume in Google Docs or Microsoft Word. Instead, use this online uh, LaTeX editor called Overleaf, and that will take your resume looking from something like this, which is what mine used to be, to something more like this. Obviously, my name's not Jake, but it's now in this format, and it looks way better, and this is way more professional. If you're someone that's reaching out to professors at a university you don't currently go to, then I recommend this email template right here, because this is selling your case much better in the fact that you're emphasizing the fact that your university does not have opportunities in this area or this research field. The time at which we send this email is also very important, so we want to queue this email up 
to arrive to the professor's inbox at around 8 or 9 a.m. in the time zone that they're in. And professors are very busy, so if about three days go by and you haven't gotten a response, I'd recommend following up again and once again queue it for 8 to 9 a.m. their time zone. You can also try contacting the more senior PhD students in the labs that you're trying to reach out to because they're not getting bombarded with emails as much as these professors are. And I've had PhD students be very nice and help point me in the right direction. And the last and most important thing I want to emphasize with this is that you cannot give up on this. You are going to get a lot of no's, especially if you're reaching out to other institutions, but you have to be persistent. You only need one yes in the end. Congrats on making it to step three, which is identifying a good fit. If you enjoyed the content so far, I'd appreciate a like and subscribe. But anyways, step three means that you were persistent and you now have some meetings set up with professors. In these meetings, they're likely to give you a broad overview of their research and let you know where you can get involved. You should also be honest with them and reiterate to them why you're interested in their research and let them know what you want to get out of this. That will make sure that you and the professor are on the same page right from the beginning. At the end, you're also going to have some opportunity to ask you questions, and if these haven't been covered, I recommend asking these two things. Number one, I would ask if there's any mentors that you're going to be able to work with, because it's a very high chance that if it's a bigger lab, you're not working directly with the professor, and you're usually paired with a master's or PhD student to work on whatever they're doing. I think something very important to ask is if there's an opportunity for you to work towards a publication, whether that be one or two years down the line, because if they say no to this, I'd honestly say it's a big red flag and it might not be worth your time if all they're willing to give you is maybe an acknowledgement on a paper down the future because you want to have something to show for your work. If after the meeting everything feels great, then congrats on stepping into the world of research. But this is where the real work begins. Because let me be real with you, research is not easy. It's full of constant dead ends, failed experiments, and the feeling that you don't know enough. That's normal. The truth is, the hardest part about research isn't the technical stuff. It's having the persistence to keep going when things aren't going right. But that's also why it feels so rewarding when they finally do. So if you're just starting out, remember, you don't need all the answers. Just take that first step and send that first email. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, let me know and I'll see you in the next one.